Hey, it's Amanda, and you are watching a segment from 100 Videos in 100 Days. This started out as a challenge to myself to prove that freedom can come from authenticity and vulnerability, and that life doesn't have to be perfect or look perfect, it doesn't have to feel perfect to be valuable. really be valuable and that you don't have to wait to share your gifts till it all looks a certain way and this is also about what the cost is of waiting to share your gifts um, I didn't have a YouTube channel before this I never did a video of myself I didn't like to see myself in camera so am I scared every time I do this yes but I'm here I'm showing up because I'm committed to this conversation about freedom. And the freer I get, I believe the freer you will get. So I invite you to participate as you can. There's no editing here. I get one take. So if it all goes to hell, you go with me. <laughs> there may be swearing, there may be crying. I may get up and walk around. That's just, it's the game. It's authentic and vulnerable. I mean, I will look different every day. So, that's really the point of it is in life there's no editing, there's no redos. So who are you gonna be? How are you gonna show up? What, what would that look like? And what would, be, what would be possible if you just showed up exactly as you were and let the cards fall? Would that be freeing? It is to me. And if it is to you, I hope you get something out of these. If there's anything that I say that rubs you wrong or feels off, discard it immediately. It's not for you. It's for whoever needs it, and most likely for me. So when this turns off and the next one turns on, I will be sitting here quietly with my eyes closed. You're not walking into any special session that you're not supposed to see. Everything's transparent here. So I just, I started this to have context in the beginning because I can see people are jumping in the middle of the series and I just want to make sure everyone feels included. So I will see you soon. There's no way that this will not be a conversation about the video I posted yesterday. I don't care how quiet I get. That is what is going to happen. What will be said, I have no idea. So if you watched number 30, it was quite a thing. And I'm fine. I knew I was fine. And feeling it and expressing it was what there was to do. If that had been a client I was working with or a friend or whatever, that would have been a very comfortable thing for me. Um, part of why I want to talk about it though is because um, the way it happened, and if you haven't seen something like that before, that may have been uncomfortable for you. That may have been a little confusing. You may have wanted to save the person on the screen, which is empathy. So that's not a bad thing. I also invite you to look at where you maybe got triggered, what scared you about it, what you loved about it, um, anything that you saw, if something empowered you, take it. If it didn't empower you, I don't want to say throw it away, but I invite you to look at what maybe unnerved you or frustrated you. You know, did you want to say, just knock it off or that's not who you are just stop doing that or you just need to take a break or whatever instantly came up for you because there's probably an access to something there that you don't 
allow for yourself, but your mind wants to override it quickly and just get it handled, which is what I do. My kids or someone showing me a problem or something, I just start giving them answers. We'll just do this. Just handle it this way. Well, have you looked here? Have you done this? Just do this. Like, because I can see it from an outside perspective. Um, but in truth, it really doesn't help people. I mean, not really. They've got it. That's got to come from within. That's where freedom is. Because someone can unlock a cage, but if you don't walk out of it, it makes no difference. <clears throat> And also, whatever thoughts, like the, the coaching you wanted to give me or the person on the screen, because believe me, when I rewatched it, I was giving it, my mom was telling, you know, me, well, just do this, stop that. But what? So that's advice you need to hear. And what's great about that is it is what you need to hear. So there's something for you in what you're offering to people. So that's the downside of, uh, I don't know if it's the downside, but when I coach someone or when I help them or talk them through something, the whole time I'm saying something to them, I'm keenly aware of my insides. It's like little tingles going through me. I know what I'm saying to them is what I need to do. It's, only, it's your only point of reference because you will always see something through a filter. It's a filter of your life, your experiences, whether you're present to them or not, your operating system knows. So you're only going to share from that place. So if it's you need to go see a doctor or you need to you need to look into what you eat or you need to not talk to them or whatever, look where that applies in your life because it's actually for you. So when I tell my kids, just do this, just do that, I automatically hear, and that's what there is for you to do. So... My ego hates it, but it helps me. And that's the point of these videos is because I've gone to people my whole life and asked what to do, how to fix me. And then maybe, probably a couple of years ago, I realized I wasn't, I'm not broken. I don't think I'm broken. My mind might want to tell me that, but I'm, I'm not broken. I'm one of the most, Something has to get done in this world. I'm handing it off to the girl that's talking to this screen. And uh, very well could be that all of her experiences in life made her be that strong. But I'm handing it to her with full confidence. I don't think you hand that to a broken person. So my mind may try and be flashy and distract me and tell me things like that. But inside, no. I, there's no broken person sitting here. But it's a very powerful experience to say that and um, no matter what your mind says. Because it's really no different than posting that video yesterday and being afraid of what everyone would say. Because I already live with the voices telling me not to do that or it's weird or it's uncomfortable, whatever it is. So I, it's really not that different than people outside doing it. Because you still are going to be judged constantly by the voice in your head. So the judgment is coming either way. I just am not going to let it be the boss. So there was a, there was a couple reasons I posted it yesterday. One is um, I'm committed to what I'm doing. And this week I've you know, had a couple people say it's not realistic, it's not possible, you can't live like that, like kind of out loud, um, I mean it's a cynical view and I understand it, it's just one that my soul doesn't accept. So I posted it because I saw how afraid I was and that I was afraid of what people would think and part of me was concerned that people wouldn't uh, completely understand what it was and I didn't want people left concerned so that was true um, but I figured if they were really concerned they'd get a hold of me and we could have a conversation I, I it's important to let people be grown-ups or be 
how they are and I have to fix it. That's something I'm very much learning. And I talk about granting being and I had a lady get upset this week about something I shared about pretending and things in life and it was interesting because I've seen people getting triggered this week by what I'm doing and I could let it be. So when yesterday, and then, you know, then they calm down and then we have a conversation. And I don't take it personally, which is weird because I'm very sensitive. So it's easy for me to take it personally. And now I'm just like, I really feel like I'm in a place that could make a difference because people are getting triggered by it. So if we're all getting triggered by something, is that's to me is a sign of some the place to go. It's a way to remove a virus in your computer. It's getting bugged. So yesterday was about granting being to myself, to that story that was going on. Because I can allow anyone else to have theirs. But there's something to being a smart rat, which I am. So I can read a book, I can go to a seminar, I can learn a technique. And then it, when I'm conscious about it, it empowers me. When I'm not, and my really smart rat gets involved, I take those things and I shut down my emotions quickly. So, you know, I could look at that and if I read a book and it says, well, this thing's in your, in your past and it's not your present and this and that, I will just, as soon as it comes up, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, they did that because they had a rough life. Or, of course, they did that because they believed a thought. So I whittle down my experience to nothing immediately and compartmentalize it instead of just allowing it to come up as it is. Do I think everything I said was true? I think it was a, it was a percepted, or percepted? I mean, it was my perception of how it happened. Do I think about it a lot? Almost never. But that doesn't mean the operating system wasn't built on those thoughts. So I really wanted to question those beliefs that were coming up when I thought I'm not going to be able to play and that means all these things. So I wanted to look at that story about not being able to play because all this emotion came up with it. So it's very easy to go, well, I read a book, just handle it this way. Just go here, just do this, whatever. Or I could sit and actually find out if it's true and feel it and grant it being. When you grant something being, it evaporates, it dissipates. It may take a little bit of time. Sometimes it's instant, sometimes it's gonna take some time. If I do not grant it being, it will just find different ways to hide and like a, an infection, it'll just keep growing. I Trust me, lots of times, there's so many stories I could tell you about where I've gone into situations of conflict and I just wanna expose the issue. And people will kill, and I mean kill, to keep things covered up. They are so terrified of what could happen instead of, which always kind of baffled me because I was like, if we just clean out the wound, it will go away. And I don't care if it's an organization, a religion, a government, if you clean out the crap, it will heal. But you have no other, it won't ever heal if you don't clean out the crap. So yesterday was a story about crap. Do I hate my parents? No. No. In fact, my dad, I think, is very much like me. He didn't know how to express it, and he had a violent upbringing. Um, you know, he had uh, his dementia, and he dealt with this it, in a sub extreme situation last year, and I was taking care of him. I don't know how many times he started crying because he thought he was going to die. I thought he was going to die and he kept saying, he just kept talking about his regrets, how many regrets he had and how he wanted to make amends. And oh, that was painful to watch. But I could understand why he wanted to make amends. If I hadn't been through the experiences I went through, I wouldn't be where I am today. Are there some places that I like, oh, I wish this was easier or this still is painful, or I see where I'm stopped. Sure. But I'm a highly unique individual. I have gifts that I think were developed through trauma. 
I actually, I, um, one of the fun times, we, I would get, um, we're going out Christmas shopping. We'll be gone for three or four hours. When we get back, you will recite to us verbatim this page of scripture. If you cannot do it word for word, Christmas is canceled. Did I memorize it? Damn straight. Well, then that was so great. Tomorrow we're going Christmas shopping. The two siblings behind you have better learn it too. Learn at Christmas. And you have to teach them. So did I learn handy skills? Yep. People oftentimes are like, how do you do what you do? How do you just... When you've had a life of, here's your choice, and it feels like life or death, you figure it out. And it makes you keenly aware of what your abilities are. Sometimes I think that's why I get in these situations like this freaking video, is my mind and people around me might say, that's crazy, that's dumb, you can't do it. But I was developed in impossible situations my whole life. So I have this nagging thing inside of me that's always like, well, I know everyone says you can't do it, but you've seen over and over again that the impossible happens all the time. That's why you know doctors and people frustrate me because it's such a limited point of view. Well, this is the truth and you can't be well. And my ego's like, yep, so we're off the hook. We're just sick. Or, you know, your hands don't work right, so you can't do jewelry, or you can't this and that, and my insights are just like, do you know, if you really looked, anything's possible, so are we going to settle? So, it's a big part of why I'm here, and people can think, well, it's just to an extreme, or it's just so personal, it's so, well, when I stand for freedom, I mean fucking freedom, like, all the way, here I am, fully visible, and you accept me or you don't, and I am still free. Period. It's not in what you think of me or what my mind tells me or how it should look. It's who I am in the moment that I now am responsible to choose because I have emptied the closets, I've flashed the light on the weird things in the background that I couldn't see before, and now it's my job to raise me up. It's my job to let me play. It's my job to give me Christmas. Those are my jobs now. And it's a sacred responsibility. And I don't take it lightly. When people ask me for help, because I have a gift in that way, I don't take it lightly. Do I think it's so serious that the world's going to end? Nope. I'm not afraid of what's on the other side, so that's not a big stress to me. But there's just a drive in me that wants full freedom for me and everyone else. So I'm willing to put myself through the ringer to get there and just see. I mean, this is really an experiment. And in the beginning, I think I do say, this could all go to hell and you're going with me. And some of you got a trip yesterday. <clears throat> I did have my daughter watch it. I knew inside I was going to post it and my mind really was trying to convince me that it was not responsible, it was disloyal, it was unkind, it was unfair. You don't get to tell everybody else's sides. Well, I've told everyone else's sides my whole life. I don't ever tell mine. Mine is equally as valuable. There's lessons for them, for people in there, and for myself. So it's not my job to protect everyone else now. And if I need to have conversations with people that I mention in this video, I'm happy to do so. Making amends and having a conversation about freedom and what this is about, all day. I know how to do that. I fuck up all the time. I make amends all the time. But I can't have any freedom if I don't make mistakes. So as I said, my daughter watched it. I, my mind kind of just wanted to see someone else process it. I also realized she's grown up in a different household with a different kind of mom. So these conversations aren't foreign to her. 
But I watched her say, if she would pause and turn and go, oh my gosh, I do that too. I didn't even see that till I watched you say that. Oh, oh yeah, I do that. Mom, well, it's so funny to see you talk like this because I don't think that about you at all. And I don't think other people do. But it's interesting to see how your mind says this. And then at one point she said, Mom, it is, I, I've never seen you like this. I've never seen you talk like this about your life. You talk about it like it's in third person. You talk about it like it was no big deal. And, sorry, the video's flashing something. So to her, I think it was an access to me because I always just have it handled, you know? Oh yeah, it was painful, but you move on. Yep, it was this, and I forgave him. Oh yeah, I. it just looks like it's all neatly packaged away. That's not the truth though, because it's still stored in your body. It's still hidden, like I said, like 95% of what we're run off of is our subconscious. That is all stored. So if you think that you have it all handled, because your life looks or matches society in some ways, I invite you to get really quiet with yourself and see how handled it really is. Say what you really mean. Be completely honest. See what that looks like. If it feels scary, that's because it's shoved back in the operating system somewhere, that it's not safe for you to express yourself fully. It's not okay to stand out. It's not okay to disagree. It's not okay to not feel well. It's not okay not to be active. It's not okay. The list goes on and on. No one has it all handled. I don't care how decorated it is. And yesterday, in that moment, it wasn't, I mean, well, it was handled, but it didn't look handled. And Christmas cards look like it's all handled. And they don't post 90% of what happened in their life. We look through our scrapbooks and our photo albums, and it's just the happy moments. And it's very weird because it's not the whole story but it's what we want everyone else to see we don't put the messy pictures in there but I really think it would create so much more balance on this planet because both sides are important the, the play and the work the messiness and the cleanliness it's all important and you have to have both sides to be empowered really So when my daughter was watching that and she said those things, I went, all right, I'm going to post it. And part of that was because when I saw her say, oh, I didn't even know I did that. Oh, well, now I can see why I do this. So it gave her access to some things in there. And I realized and that's really what I tend to love about the seminars I've done, even though they're to be rough, is the courage. Just the courage that people have to go up and have those conversations. I mean, you are just, that's how I fell in love with human beings. I didn't like human beings until I was like 30. And then I saw ones do what I did on there, you know, but with someone. So it does look different. It's not just someone talking to themselves. But the courage that they had to say what they felt, to really say what they felt, maybe for, probably for the first time. And to want to work through it because they love themselves and they love the people around them and they know that the truer they are themselves, the more they can offer. I mean, there's nothing like it to see that. And so when my daughter was saying, oh, I see this and I saw that, and I went, oh yeah, crap. That's what I love out of the seminar. So that's what, you know, partially what I was offering. And to say things out loud is very important. A lot of times when you do work like this, it's easy to conceptualize it. It's easy to just write it down. It is very, it is critically important to feel it and say it. When you say it, it actually kind of clears out this, it just kind of puts a settling vibration through your whole body and it allows your truth to be okay. That's why when you're angry, if you can yell, if you can run it out, pound it out, actually feel it physically, and I don't mean go scream at people, 
or get violent. And it might look that way sometimes. But I assure you, so much better than not saying anything. It makes you sick. But saying out loud empowers you and allows you to know that you can say it and only you have to honor it. But when you say it, it's like giving yourself a hug saying, yeah, I saw it too. And just acknowledging it. Somehow not saying it out loud or maybe saying it to anyone else still keeps it kind of a secret. It's like, I can, I'll figure this out quietly so no one will ever have to know. And then, like I said, you're as sick as your secrets. I know had I not posted that yesterday, I would, if there would have been one element in there that would have been like, well, see, there's still like some shame there. They're still feeling like, oh, I'm bad because I was disloyal. I'm bad because this, and it's in, they're not the truth, but my mind will try and convince me that we hid something. And I'm not hiding anything anymore, so fuck it. You know? It's not, it's, to me, it's not worth it. To some of you, it very well may be worth whatever that costs you. And we all have to figure that out for ourselves. Um, so lastly, I think I'll just say what I was doing in the second half of the video was from a worksheet um, that you get from the Byron Katie website. I think it's thework.com. You can actually log in there and I believe you can sit and type out the worksheets. Um, if you buy the books, it's obviously more helpful. And she has tons of videos on YouTube of people doing what I did, but with her. And they're very touching. And most of the time they're very funny because the mind is crazy. It says crazy stuff. And I know the one I did yesterday was emotional. But did you see when I said, I'm not allowed to work, my eyes popped open? That's called a reality check. That's called balance. So your story could be I'm not allowed to play or I'm ugly, but the truth may be you're more afraid that you're beautiful. And when you flip it to I'm beautiful, you can actually find examples of it. And it might be the thing that actually wants to be hidden is what if I actually knew I was beautiful? What would life be like? What if I said I'm beautiful? So generally the thought that you lock onto actually hides what's true. So, that's what there is to share. And if, um, well, if you feel stuck about something, just let it be stuck. I immediately want to go, everyone can email me and I'll help you sort it out. I'm let you sort it out. Whatever advice you want to give me, take it. And you know what? If there was advice you want to give me, actually post that because... That's what there is for you to see and just acknowledge it. It's actually hilarious. When you, if you can look at that and turn that around, that's what a lot of worksheets are. Turn it around to yourself. I this. If I'm blaming someone, turn it on myself. Like, I think she's a jerk. Turn around. I think I'm a jerk. Yeah, a lot of the time I do. And when I'm calling her a jerk, I'm probably being a jerk. It creates balance. And it doesn't let the ego run with a story about the jerk over there. Oh yeah, I can be a jerk too sometimes. I can say, why should you want to be a jerk to the jerk? And then it just, the story dissipates. And just feel what that feels like. And there's no need to shut it down so quickly. I could have with that worksheet said, oh, yeah, well that's not true. And that was just, per that was just a perception. And that, did you ever have happy moments in your childhood? Yes. Did your parents try hard? Yes. Was your dad a perfectionist and didn't know how to cope with that? Like you? Yes. And then, had I done that and not given myself the space, then my story is not valid either. None of it's true and none of it's not true. It just is what it is. And it's just, let it out and then it will go. Like giving the kid the popsicle, it's yelling for it. Give him the popsicle and he'll run off. <sighs> Any of you that sat through that, like I said, you are either crazy like me. You're just some kind of warrior that 
I'm honored to have around. And uh, I love the crazies too. You're the best. There's no way you could know how humbling this is. To have anyone want to go along for this ride. And it encourages me because it helps me to want to keep stepping into what's possible. So, thank you. I hope this cleared some things up for people or give, give you access to something else that's possible for you. I know I learned... If, shit ton and I have 69 more to go so everyone buckle up <laughs> I'm gonna get like a safety suit or some kind of helmet <sighs> all right love you guys bye